Ah, yes, Counter-Strike Cosmetics. So controversial, yet so popular and expensive. Thousands of dollars for virtual pixels, money laundering, an entire virtual economy worth billions, and many nefarious activities by bad actors. But besides all that, I really like skins. Their designs and overall feel is unlike anything compared to weapon cosmetics from other games. As an avid skin enjoyer and artistic connoisseur, I do have my gripes, criticisms, and completely justifiable arguments about what constitutes as a good weapon finish. So prepare yourself for an entire video full of pretentious contrarian nonsense about virtual cosmetics in a video game from the mind of yours truly. Weapon skins can be broken down into two categories. Case skins are collections of finishes chosen from the community workshop, plus the exceedingly rare knife slash gloves that can be obtained by opening the cases. Themed weapon collections have a wider range of rarity grades. They do not include knives or gloves and are mostly made by Valve themselves. These skins can be obtained as weekly level up drops, but this only applies to certain collections. Others can be obtained as exclusive rewards during operations, but most collections are retired and can only be purchased from the existing supply available, even though Valve has never stated such. With that out of the way, I think map and theme collections are underrated. That sounds very stupid, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, but Desolence, how can you say they are underrated? Some of the most expensive and desired skins in the game are from themed collections. What about souvenirs? Well, yes, but it's always about the coverts or classifieds. What about the rest? Are they garbage? That's debatable. Also, there are quite a few collections that people don't even know exist because it's so rare to see these skins in-game. I am of the opinion that most skins have their own merits. It shouldn't be always about what is the flashiest and rarest skin in the game. Triple Zero Float with 4X Cattle 14 stickers? Get out of here! Dreamhack 2013 Souvenir Skin with Frosty the Hitman Foil Sticker? Now that's exotic. I'm just not really a fan of skins from cases, and I do not mean to discredit the artists. They are doing a fantastic job. It's just not for me. Too flashy, too hectic, too busy, over-designed. To me, it just ruins the integrity of the weapon itself and becomes unrealistic. Not that CS was ever that realistic to begin with, but still, my main issue is the lack of balance in terms of style and design that does not adhere to the weapon it is applied to. Let's look at the AK point disarray. Besides a few interesting design elements, most of it is just a cacophony of colors and shapes, and while that may be the point of the composition, it still would have had the same effect, or better, if it was simplified. Now, let's compare that to a collection skin that seems just as busy and is overall close in rarity grade, the AK Safety Net. Despite the colors and shapes it forms, the overall composition is a lot more unified and simpler to read, to great effect. The barrel, magazine, and I think that's the bolt carrier are just black. Other bits use a sort of pale turquoise color, but the stock, grip, and forend use the main graphic with an orange foreground pattern that complements the gray turquoise background and the rest of the skin for that matter. It just makes it more nicely balanced. Obviously, Valve holds community skins to their own standards and have accepted many highly illustrated skins in the game. They have even stated in their workshop style guide that illustrations must interact with the weapon it is applied to and seeing what is accepted in-game, this rule seems to be maintained and completely contradicts my ramblings about weapon integrity and balance, but I have a different perspective, maybe a bit biased even. Also, I'm not saying all skins from cases suck, there are pretty clever or uniquely designed finishes that definitely deserve props, and there are over-designed flashy collection skins, but those, I can kinda give them a pass due to how exceedingly rare they are to get, even during operations. I mean, if the chances of it dropping are close to zero, it might justify the level of salience on the skin. Additionally, in the workshop style guide, it is mentioned that colors shouldn't be too bright or dark. Skins like the M4 and 
Tech 9 decimators had to be slightly desaturated. Overall, I do think with skins being detailed and flashy, that just kind of cultivates this standard by the community where anything less is looked down upon. I mean, let's look at the Dreams and Nightmares contest. It had great submissions, but ultimately, I think Valve chose what best fits with the game, as they always do, yet people were still disappointed that the skins with more effort put into them did not get chosen. Back to themed weapon collections, I do think they are not appreciated in the same way as cases. Evidently though, they do have their own niche and if we look at their price trend, it's always up, but that's due to them not dropping and there is demand for the higher tiers, which causes people to do trade-ups, deleting the lower tiers, which results in the entire collection going up in value over time, but hey, that makes these collections pretty investable long term. Another thing to add is patterns and float, which I know exist in case skins, but not in the same way. In collections, there is quite a bigger variety, and it can sometimes change the outlook of the skins. Fade percentage, easter eggs and patterns, high floats, low floats, 0.06 factory new capped skins are way more common. In a way, you have the same skin, but multiple flavors, depending on what you are looking for. Maybe I'm being overdramatic about this whole thing, I just have such a passion for themed collections. I just love the additional rarity grades, the themes they follow, based on maps or certain subjects, the fact that they cannot be infinitely printed, the differences between each collections with the rarity grades. Okay, <clears throat> now, enough pointless drivel, let's explore some cool skins. Now, I'm not gonna do an in-depth review, I'll do that for a Another time, for now, I'll just briefly examine the history and appearance of themed collection finishes. Starting with the originals, the first ever collections introduced during the arms deal update on 14th of August 2013. Man, this was such a revolutionary update which not only brought skins, but the silenced M4 and USP as alternate CT weapons. Unfortunately, nobody realized it was revolutionary. Back then, a majority of people really did not like the idea of these TF2 type microtransactions and cosmetics being brought to CS, but the new weapons were a nice addition. The new collections were 8, excluding the two from cases, and the way you could obtain them was as timed drops. There was no XP progression progression and weekly drop, but it was still a set number of items per week, but getting them was at random. The information I found is kind of vague, but the drops seem to be at least twice as many compared to nowadays. The skins themselves, besides a few iconic ones, aren't really remarkable in general, but I do find them unique because they still represent the aesthetic of the map. The repetitive patterns plastered on different guns with different colors I find to be quite charming for what it is. And my goodness, the randomness and the number of skins and grades, completely incoherent. Speaking of inconsistencies, fun fact, the Assault and Militia collections were missing skin grades which were added shortly after, probably because it made trade-up contracts impossible. So Assault added a 5-7 candy apple. For Militia, it was missing a Restricted, filled in with the M4 Modern Hunter, and an Industrial Grade filled in with the P2K Grassland Leaves. What a blunder. Unfortunately, these 8 collections were replaced only a few months later by the ones that are still actively dropping today, which is quite the weird decision. I don't understand why they were replaced in such a short time. These 6 new collections you all know to death, except Mirage, which again a couple of months later was replaced by the Bank Collection. Another bizarre decision. Regardless, these new collections are a lot more consistent with the rarity grades, but the skins themselves aren't anything too noteworthy. Also around this time, the first ever collection based on a theme instead of a map was introduced, the Alpha Collection during Operation Bravo. In a similar vein, new collections were added as exclusive drops during operations, which has become the standard since. For Operation Breakout, we got the first covert grade skin, the fabled Dragon Lore from the Cobblestone Collection. Later collections and operations also included coverts. In Bloodhound, we got the only to date collection to feature a covert that isn't an AK M4 or OP, the AUG Akihabara Accept. 
Nuke and Inferno 2018 collections were introduced to the drop pool in a time when maps eligible for the souvenir packages during majors weren't that interesting. Speaking of souvenirs, in 2014, the map Cache was part of the active duty maps but didn't have a collection, so Valve simply made one, which makes this the only ever collection to have souvenir skins before regular ones. And finally, since Shattered Web for each operation, three new collections are made available to be infinitely printed for a limited time during the event instead of the previous drop system. All collections have coverts, sometimes they are based on maps, other times are themes, but overall each is unique in its own right with many iconic finishes. Collections here are consistent with the number of skins per rarity grade, and since Broken Fang, they even have two classified skins. Well, so as to not divulge any further, I'll leave it at that. Themed collections are underrated due to the community being spoiled on shiny skins and not enough appreciation for something more raw and realistic. And I will take that to the grave. One last thing I want to add is I really wish the retired collections can come back in some capacity, maybe as mission rewards just like they did in Operation Vanguard. Maybe this whole subject is not as much of a profound idea like I'm such a quirky contrarian and I'm being too hyperbolic, but then again, nobody talks about the history of these things and not many people really know of the existence of some of these collections. And on that note, I need to put some grease on my door hinges. All that squeaking has been getting on my nerves lately, but I must be careful. Last time I spilled some grease on the floor which made it quite slippery and impossible to clean off.